Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, hopefully, as the last speaker, it's saving the best for last and not waiting till everybody falls asleep, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about this digital transformation, what it really means for you, for your organizations. Now, by a show of hands, how many of you have missed lunches, dinners, birthday parties because of software releases, hardware changes, because it took hours and perhaps days to resolve? There's a lot of people who have not been working in IT for a long time or just don't want to raise their hands. Everyone in this room perhaps has been on that side of the house. And it's not pleasant, right? But why is that ever more important today? Because of the applications that we run. You may be responsible for hardware, for that data center, but that data center is there for a reason. That server is running something very, very critical. And it's perhaps websites, applications, serverless technologies that we're working with. And today, even more than ever, the apps are a critical part of our day to day. Most of us here are probably booking flights, hotels, and doing everything via our phones, via mobile apps. Our businesses perhaps get an extra stream of revenue because of the mobile apps that our organizations have created. If those apps are down, if those websites are down, well, what can happen? Well, potential loss of revenue. And we see a lot of examples. We call that the moment of truth. When, when is that going to happen? Well, when we do that release, when we do that change in hardware and software, what can tragically happen at times? Well, this is just one of the many scenarios that has happened in the last couple of months. And knowing that this very famous artist was going to sell out tickets, this website was not ready for the influx of customers that were going to hit it via their mobile app, their actual .com application that they were going to. And we've seen uh, many times, whether it's a business going on a Black Friday, Mother's Day, and all of a sudden all these flower shops cannot stand that extra amount of bandwidth and of customers coming in. And those are the situations that are no shock to them. But what happens on the day to day when something happens, an influx for our customers, and we're going through all this? How many of us have found ourselves in this situation as well? We have the funds, we're ready to transact. Maybe this could be one of our customers ready to make a purchase, and they just can't. Whether it's on the dot com side, whether it's on the mobile app, what's going to happen? How long is it going to take for Maria here to buy that service or that product? How long is it going to take your team to realize, A, that there's a situation, B, identify that root cause, and three, find out how much money was lost because there's a thousand more customers facing this in an hour, three, or four. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today, how that digital transformation impacts us all. Now, another added layer of complexity is not just the apps that we're running with, but also the modern cloud. Here we have a plethora of options today. And we have the big boys, like we call them the big three, your AWS, your Azure, your GCPs. But we have other things, right? We have a, a transformation that some organizations uh, here are providing enterprise or private cloud. Hybrid cloud is very popular nowadays. How are we going to mitigate all that? Survey saying that 86% um, are actually using cloud native technologies or are doing something heavily in the cloud today. Now, with all that added complexity, we come in with a lot more data. We're not just talking about infrastructure anymore. We're not just talking about customer experience. We're talking about our serverless technologies. We have our SRE disciplines. Uh, we also have the hybrid cloud that's coming into all this. Security all rolled into one. And observability is growing fast. Now, what is observability nowadays? Is that a sexier way right, to say monitoring? No, absolutely. Monitoring is what you're doing to a system, to something that says it's up or it's down. You're not figuring out the traces, the logs, the user experience, the customer impact, the revenue that's being gained or lost by that. And even though you have all this data coming in, you have another challenge now, that the volume and the variety of data is going to change rapidly. Uh, if we have this same event next year, we're going to be talking probably with the same vendors with many more challenges and many more features. Much more data is being analyzed today. So how can you take in all those metrics, all those sessions, all the impact of a customer, and analyze all that rapidly today? Well, one of the things is the digital transformation. It's basically using the digital technologies from ourselves that we see here today, a lot of the vendors as well, and changing something important. 
changing the business process, the culture, and the customer experience. An added thing to that is now when we hear and talk about the DevOps or the SRE platforms and mentality. Because we hear DevOps, but let's understand in the reality what it really is. Uh, it could be in some of our job titles. I had the title of a DevOps engineer at one point. But in reality, it's a practice. It's a synergy of two teams, a, dev a development team, an operational team, and also the business units have to be involved in all this interaction. We want to deploy the software faster. We want to make sure that customer experience, whether internal or external, is meeting the proper expectations. Sometimes we think that the feedback is only when something goes wrong. But what if you deploy new hardware, deploy new software? Have we improved the scenario here? Well, sometimes we only focus on the bad. But we want to make sure we're tracking in the right direction and investing our time wisely here. I'm going to talk a little bit about the digital transformation we experienced at Citrix. Um, been at Danatrace actually today, second year, with the organization Danatrace, but not a stranger to the platform. I was a customer for close to 10 years, and many other organizations um, focused mainly uh, with my time at Citrix when I was in charge of all the infrastructure and cloud services at a global level. And we had to change. We had to transform. But one of the things that we needed to do is that we needed to accelerate and be more proactive and not just reactive. We wanted to reduce that firefighting because uh, we couldn't spend uh, one, two of our engineers being stuck in a war room for hours and days when they were getting paid to do something else. And we wanted to increase the quality of our bills and our releases, right? So one of the things that we were able to accomplish is a reduction in our MTTR, our mean time to resolution, identifying those issues rapidly and effectively. Being able to integrate practices like Agile and DevOps to increase our self-healing and our production services, using the other tool sets along with Dynatrace and using that automation and the AI. But also we're going to talk a little bit about that cultural shift because well, we've heard about ChatGPT, we've heard about a lot of the things that this could change, but it scares certain individuals and it's normal to see that. And today we're going to talk about a little bit about trusting the data. How can we trust the data that we're ingesting and analyzing? Working smarter, not harder in all these cases, not fearing the automation. Can automation take certain roles? Yes. But our focus is here to automate yourself out of your current job role into the next. And that happened quite a bit when we were at Citrix and the team. Uh, they were system engineers. Now they went ahead and automated a lot of their processes. A lot of their workloads was reduced. Now they had time to learn about our cloud environment, became cloud engineers, DevOps engineers, security, and things of the like. So we want to make sure we're accelerating all these things. Now from the Danatase platform perspective, how do we get that integration in that data? Well, here we have something that's known as the problem card. And here we're giving answers versus data, monitoring versus the observability that we have today. How many of us um, use monitoring tools today, for example? Uh, we have our infrastructure monitoring, our application monitoring, network monitoring, all these things. And how many of us uh, have access to all those tool sets? It's a little bit difficult. When you have a problem in your organization, do you have to go only to one team to get a resolution or an answer? Or is it two, three, four, or five perhaps, right? And that's probably what we're experiencing nowadays. We can actually get all this data and analyze that for you and the impact we have. Here we see that Dynatrace has detected three applications were impacted. One service was critically impacted and no infrastructure. But we did breach 10 SLOs. And that's critical because the SLOs is that promise that we're making to our customers internally and externally. So if now we were in the knock or we were an alerting team, which team will we not call at 2 o'clock in the morning? Well, the infrastructure team. We don't have to pull them into a war room, wake them up, because nothing on the infrastructure was impacted. How great of a, of a task, of a good thing that would be to know which teams to actually call and not. On top of that, Dynatrace gives us the business impact analysis. So during this two-hour time frame that we experienced this issue, we had close to 300 users on our app or our website, but 199 of them were impacted here. Now we can actually do a drill down and figure out, well, is this a customer that was trying to do a transaction? We have today major uh, cruise liners, airliners, and customer service reps that they're not in IT. They're customer service representatives using the data from Dynatrace to reach out to these users and say, hey, David, we saw you were trying to book a cruise. We would, we would notice that you were having some difficulties. 
uh, we apologize for that. Here's a shipboard credit. We're going to make that same booking for you. And now that organization has deterred or deferred that potential loss of revenue of three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 per customer that we have here, the impact that we make. But most importantly, the, the issue here is that root cause analysis. Even though various apps were affected, that root cause comes determined because of the artificial intelligence. And I'm going to say Davis. You're going to see it there on the right-hand side that is integrated. It's to the core. We didn't buy this product. We didn't uh, think of it afterwards from the nucleus of the platform of Dynatrace. It was analyzing all our servers, our hosts, applications, and processes in real time and automatically. And we see the evolution that we have of this problem. We can do a breakdown, exactly see where it was impacted. We're not calling somebody at 11 o'clock in, uh, in the evening, perhaps, six different teams. And we're not bombarding teams, Slack, email, WhatsApp business on things that are continuously happening where we can send one alert and let you know exactly where the problem or difficulty is in this scenario. So that's very critical for us to do. And just highlighting again, once again, we don't want to just give data. We want to give answers, but we want to give business answers. It's great that we can work well with the DevOps teams, with the development teams, operational folks, but at the end of the day, our executives and our company wants to know exactly who was impacted, internal or external, how much money can we potentially save or stop from being lost. And that's very important for us to do. We do that drill down. We have the user experience built in, baked into the platform of Dynatrace, and we can give those metrics very clearly. Now, the chat ops, something interesting that we want to talk about is the AI was fully automated. Our deployments were done once a week on Wednesdays, and they would go from 9 to about 11.30 or noon. And every time there was a deployment, somebody from the team had to miss lunch because there was always testing that was delayed, problems that arose, and that took hours to figure out. At the end of the day, um, but when I say by that, after uh, a few years of implementing the DevOps practices, Agile, and integrating Dynatrace as the platform, taking advantage of that AI and that automation, we were able to not just deploy rapidly, but our deployments were reduced down to 30 minutes with full end-to-end -end testing, and about 95% of the system incidents that occurred afterwards were reduced. And we were able to go ahead and deploy in production daily and sometimes twice a day. We use Slack bots that were there to uh, pull the information from Dynatrace. We were using now, instead of having one engineer sit down there with another set of engineers, we automated this process in our dev and our QA environments. We didn't have to take now one person to sit down and babysit. We knew that Dynatrace was analyzing the infrastructure, the testing, the end-to-end -end analytics that we knew we can go ahead and build these automations for them here. And the, pro the production deployments uh, via Slack were, were done. Uh, you can see that exactly what a team member would do. They would uh, take servers off the load balancer, put them back on, make sure the testing was done, send emails, send updates via Slack. And these were the things that were accomplished because of the power and that artificial intelligence of Dynatrace. We took that one step above. We now started integrating the bot for self-support and self-healing. When we knew there was a problem, when we trusted that data of Dynatrace to say, hey, this is the root cause, this server, this issue, we went ahead and automated that. We can either use our APIs, uh, Ansible, Chef, whatever it is that you and your organizations are using, you can go ahead and integrate it. How many of us wouldn't want to understand what's going on and then have something fix it for us in an automated fashion? So we can focus, like the video we saw previously, on the more important things, do grande inventi things like the video had mentioned there as well. Now, Denetrace helps us deliver securely and reliably. We never want to sacrifice security over speed. And this goes for any hardware, for any software, for any changes that we're making in our infrastructure. We want to make sure that we're doing that in a proper way. We want to make sure we have that production reliability. We want to do that shift left, release validations, our testing is done end to end. And our delivery pipelines, whatever it is that your customers are using, whether it's an automated format, a CI, CD, we want to make sure that we can integrate end-to-end -end with that. And Dynatrace can do that really, really great because we have that artificial intelligence. Once again, it's a deterministic AI. It has the AI ops. It has the machine learning built in. It's not a correlation engine. It's a causation engine that tells you the reason why something is occurring 
in this scenario, giving you that root cause. We understand the business. We understand the impact this makes, not just giving you alerts, but we're giving you business answers to the technology team as well. And we're being pretty predictive as well. Our SLOs are able to let us know kind of like that movie Minority Report when crimes uh, were about to happen. We can determine whether something is going to occur in your environment. And Dana Trace is learning how it should behave on a Monday morning versus a Friday afternoon. Are you getting a DDoS attack because now on Friday there's much less users, but you're getting twice as many users than on a Monday morning. This is an anomaly, and it's going to flag it. It's going to let you know what the issues that are happening here. And, of course, we have our remediation, our integration with all our tools that we have, your Ansibles, your Chefs, your ServiceNow, your X Matters, and we can get that integration depending on what you and your organization are using as well. Now, we see here what most of our customers and perhaps what your organization may be experiencing now, the do-it-yourself mentality. You say, well, we have a lot of great engineers and architects, and that's true. Most organizations have them, and that's wonderful. We have very talented people at Citrix as well. But what happens is that it gets to a point that all that data becomes bigger and comes at a much faster speed. So you have your metrics being taken by a logic monitor, a data dog, for example, maybe coming from the hyperscalers. Uh, your traces, you may be using a legacy uh, tool like New Relic, and they are good just for the traces. We're not saying they're not. And for logs, we have uh, one of the leaders in Splunk and, and Logarithm and Elastic, and they're great in their own little world. But what happens is that now we have to correlate all this information. Now we have to get somebody each from each team and figure out exactly what's going on. Because you get an alert at 3 o'clock from Datadog, at 3.05 from New Relic, and then at 3.10 Splunk spits something out and says, hey, this could be the reason why. And you're going to have to hunt down the database team, the networking team, infrastructure and apps. It just takes time. So businesses say, well, we don't have that time. Now we need to go out and find another tool that can do the time and event correlation, your Big Panda, your Sabix, your MuleSoft, uh, ScienceLogic here, how it has it. And you get a ton of dashboards. You get great dashboards, great information, but at the end, you still have to sit down. Um, one of the consultants I was working with at the um, cryptocurrency company I was at, and he mentioned we were, they were using Datadog, and he said, well, if I give the needle in the haystack example, Datadog tells me which haystacks have a needle, and I still have to identify those five haystacks out of the 50 that were there. But with Dan and Trace, he says, is putting a big magnet on top of the haystacks, and all the needles just pop up, and he just ends up grabbing them. That was his perspective, his scenario from that perspective. He had running all on GCP and uh, Kubernetes as well. He was able to automate much more frequently, much more rapidly, focusing on improving that application for the cryptocurrency customers. The difference, I know a lot of you have passed by our booth, we're right there to the right-hand side. We can give you a demo and gladly talk to you more about that. What is the difference between those other tool sets and Dynatrace? Well, it's the all-in-one observability. We're doing the metrics, we're doing the traces, we're doing the logging, we're doing the AI ops is built in. The AI ops is capturing all those metrics, all the customer user experience, all the infrastructure and networking is analyzing all that data, either ingesting it from other customers and vendors, and then we're spitting out answers, not just dashboards, but we have dashboards that are for the C-level. We have dashboards that are not going to go for customer service to development teams, to IT operations teams. They can make the proper decisions. Uh, we had an issue, one of the largest um, movie theater chains in Central America and in, in Mexico when the premiere of Spider-Man occurred. We were monitoring not just their website, not just their apps, but also their kiosk. And they noticed that their kiosk kept crashing. So what happened to them? Well, they needed to figure out what was going on. It was a hardware issue for some, and a lot of it was software. Uh, they couldn't resolve it immediately. What was happening? Well, the people that were trying to buy the tickets on the kiosk were not going to the actual personnel that were there. But as a manager of these uh, movie theaters, you're assuming you have 10 kiosks. I'm only going to have two or three actual people at these movie theaters. So with that data, with that dashboard, we were actually able to tell them which movie theaters were highly impacted and which one had the most amount of transactions that were being failed. They went ahead and called the managers of these branches and said, bring people over now. So they were able to bring those personnel in, and if you had 10 machines that were down, we brought in 10 people to make sure we could mitigate and not have them go 
to the competition, which was a few blocks down, and they prevented uh, about $50,000 per hour, and, and there was about 10 of these movie theaters within that city. So we see the great impact that janitors, if they didn't have that data, where to send their personnel at, they would have lost a ton of money, and it would have been an impact not just on the revenue side, but also uh, Twitter and Facebook would have blown up and said, we tried to go get a movie, you knew it was a big release, and their competition got hit because uh, social media was not too kind to them and said that they were not ready for that, but this organization was, again, solving business problems, not just the IT part of the house of it as well. Bringing it all together, we have the user experience, we have that visibility end-to-end, -end. we have the application and traces, known as the dynamic tracing or peer path, Within Denetris, down to the code level, we can get what issues are being experienced, right? What actual user, name and last name, email, is it a platinum user, is it a gold user, is it just a first timer? And then we have all our infrastructure metrics, your serverless, your cloud, whether you're on VMware, Hyper-V, we got you covered on all that as well. Now, one thing I do want to go through is the concept of observability. How do we get there? It's not an overnight. Digital transformation doesn't just happen from one day to another just because one team wants it to happen. Uh, we also like talking about the blueprint that needs to occur uh, with the various organizations. We have the foundation to the strategic part of the house. The foundation is that you have a, a monitoring tool. Perhaps you have dashboards and baselines. Um, you have certain metrics that, that, that you like, but you want to take that to the next level. How do you get there? Well, you're going to go to the cloud. You're going to go and get your EC2, your GCP, your serverless technologies. You're going to have more dependencies on logging now. You want to get those anomaly detections going. Now you have role-based dashboards, and that's the next step in the evolution of observability. Dashboards not just for IT teams, but business teams should be viewing your dashboards from the same platform. That's the one way you can unify all that data with answers and comparing what happened before and after a deployment or after a change occurred, good or bad. And some organizations, they see this and they go, yes, that's where I want to be. I want to be in that cloud technology part of the spectrum. And that's great. You need to be there. But we don't want to get stuck there. We want to make sure that we're not just staying on pillars one and two, but we're moving beyond that and going to the strategic part of observability. We have these disciplines. We now are going to track or release management, whether it's hardware or software. We have SRE concepts. And many organizations say, well, uh, is that I don't have enough people, or I don't have an SRE team or a DevOps team. You don't need to. Within Down and Trace, basically an SLA is the uh, acknowledgement that you know what you want this to be up and running. It's a 98%, 93% weekend or, or weekday. And basically the SLA is your indicator. What are you using to indicate and alert you that you're going to breach uh, an, an SLA? And that SLO is that promise. Hey, I promised you that this SLA is going to be within this time frame, and 9 out of 10 times I made it happen, so you have a great SLA. But if that SLO keeps getting less and less, well, that's when we start uh, losing the trust of the business, uh, whether it's internal or external customers. Denitrix can give that information here. And of course, we want to make sure we're involving application security, we're ingesting all that data in as well to make sure we're not having any vulnerabilities with us as well. Cloud automation, we want to make sure that our testing, whether it's functional and our performance is being automated as well. That was one delay that we had in our uh, DevOps lifecycle that the development team and testing team, we depended on a team uh, abroad that they had to get 10, 12 engineers to test the data and they were only testing some big points, but they weren't doing an end to end. When we went on the automation side, they started now developing code and proper testing that was automated that would take care of every single thing that a customer or, a, or somebody would be using and not have to miss anything out. Because it was automated, it was able to be scaled out and able to be done on demand. And they were able to do much more resilient testing within minutes versus hours that we were depending on as well. And towards the end and towards that latter part, you get your incident management and resolution. You get to be able to restart your services, your servers, in an automated fashion with uh, auto-remediation, problem alerting, that you cannot just detect the problem, but remediate it automatically using the tool sets that are being done there. And product reliability. You get more trust from your customers, from your internal businesses. When you tell 
your internal business, we're going to deploy something in two weeks, they're happy to hear it, that it's going to work because they trust you, and they know when you say two weeks, it is two weeks and not three, four weeks down the line, they're still waiting on something to happen for their benefit. So we want to make sure that we're adopting these other pillars here, and this is what we consider the observability maturity blueprint. We were able to accomplish this uh, at Citrix, and we were able to help many organizations get from the foundation to the last incident and management resolution. Some organizations have taken this approach, and they've done this in three, three and a half years. Some take the approach that every year they make these changes. But we do realize that there's a partnership going on and how InfoTech, uh, one of our great partners here in the area, can help uh, U.S. customers uh, approach that as well and how Dynatrace can be an integral part of that. Because uh, we have from the foundation to the incident management, our platform as well is everything in between. As we can see here, we have not just the topology, the time series, the user experience, we have the SRE data that comes in, the automation that comes in, and all that problem and alerting based on that AI ops that we have here going on. And I had one more slide, but I don't see that it's going to come up. It was the announcement we had about Gartner. Um, we have been the leaders for the last 12 years with APM and observability. It got to be um, so much of a frustration because folks kept seeing us as, a, as an APM tool, the infrastructure monitoring tool, perhaps that Gartner had to create that APM and observability part of it. And um, I wish I could get it up there, but it was 24 hours ago, I believe, was released, uh, the new Gartner Magic Quadrant, and we are on the top, and we have pulled ahead from the rest of what we consider competition. So we're very happy for 13 years in a row to be the leaders in the observability space, and we look forward to uh, helping everyone here for that. So happy for Dan and Trace. Congrats. So towards the end for enterprise success, we always talk about um, the culture and the technology. 80% of it will be a culture. Uh, folks are going to be depending on the old ways of doing things, not automating things, because I'm the superhero. I'm the one that takes three hours to find this. I don't want a platform that can do it in minutes. So I'm the one that takes uh, three hours to restart the servers, and I don't want PowerShell or Python or Ansible to go ahead and do it for me. That was a lot of struggles that we had at Citrix as well. Many organizations globally in, in the Latin region and the Caribbean, we noticed some of that uh, mentality. It's not just here in the region, it's global. And we want to make sure that we're changing that culture, changing that mindset, and then having the proper tools that we can do that here. Democratizing that data, making sure that it's not just IT, making sure it's not just dev teams, that we have finance looking at that data. We have marketing looking at the data. How many times have you been in a situation that, as an application owner, uh, you get hit with much more people coming into a website and to an app and you wonder, what the heck happened? Oh, because marketing sent out a campaign and they're giving 50% off and you were not ready for that because you were doing a deployment. Well, now here we're integrating that data. We can know and expect that data coming in. Marketing is available with, with their, our customer service reps. They have nothing to do with the technical side of the house. They have their own dashboards as well. So uh, empowering the teams for that, working smarter, uh, involving those DevOps, uh, life cycles and doing everything and incorporating data trace beyond as an APM. Uh, in reality, what we are a software intelligence platform. And uh, if you want to know more, we're more than glad. Uh, my team over there, Alejandro and um, Rafael, can help you guys out as well as myself to answer any questions that you and your business may have a challenge with. So thank you for this, and I thank you for the opportunity. And we'll open it up to any questions. I'll let our MC come up. Thank you so very much, Nestor Zapato. Any questions? Any questions? I particularly liked your, your scenario with regards to the, the movie cinema. And there's something that you said in terms of, um, you know, the IT, it basically helps to solve business, business problems, not just IT, yep. um, IT issues. And I think even though we've been speaking about data and processing data, dissemination of data, the security of data, I think what I got from your presentation is that data without context that allows you to actually use certain insights to take the necessary actions and how do you solve the problem in the first place. Correct. So that's definitely what I got, data with context. Any questions? None. We're all good. All right, don't worry about it. We're gonna